Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Ukwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jenix. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Good How are morning. you this morning? I'm good. Perfect. Good morning, our favorite Niger wife. Good morning. Your what? only Niger wife. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that. Really? Are you really the only Niger wife? Oh, you're the only one. No, for here, yes. Yeah, yeah, I claim doing it. well. I are you sure? <laughs> yes. Okay, fine. Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll see. How, maybe we have some who be in Niger wives. Okay. Yes. You never know. In waiting. <laughs> you never know. No, you yeah. never know. You never know. Look, you might be bringing one for look, us. Look, um, um, Rufai has transferred the handshake to you now. Uh -huh. So, you be careful. Good yeah. morning, Rufai. How, How are you? Doing? you? How is he doing? Well, How are you doing? It's an international space. Yes. yes. You know, it's been... Um, really terrible uh, this past few days oh, for beautiful. Nigerians, uh, especially people of Delta State, Kaduna mm -hmm. State. And, but let's begin in Delta State. With more reactions that have trailed the killing of troops of the 181 Amphibious Battalion of the Nigerian Army, who were on a peaceful mission in Okoma, Delta State, on Monday, the Army debunked what they termed as media propaganda by those complicit in the dastardly act after reports began circulating that the military allegedly raised Okoma community and opened fire, killing over 50 persons in reprisal attacks. The director of the Army's public relations, Onye Mangwachuku, in a statement, said the reports were a clear indication that the murder of the troops was a communally orchestrated attack against legitimate forces. The statement reads in part, Regrettably, the community complicit in the dastardly act has resorted to media propaganda and shenanigans rather than engage in a positive effort to fish out the perpetrators of this heinous crime. This again is a clear indication that the murder of the troops was a communally orchestrated attack against legitimate forces. The falsehood being peddled by these criminals and their cohorts to whip up sentiments and sway the public to cover up and also support the outrageous criminal acts of their armed youth gang should be disregarded in its entirety. It is only a ridiculous attempt at justifying their crime. Well, in the meantime, a video of reported residents of Okoma community who pled anonymity as they narrated their ordeal with the military has gone viral on social media. They spoke to Delta State Broadcast Television. On the 14th of March, 2024, they are at home that very day. They now saw that uh, some military personnel, army came to Okwama. So they now welcome them. They say they want to walk around the community. They walk around the community. Say they want to go to the town hall, they have a peace talk. They now went to the town hall. They, they now interrogate them as a military men, they welcome them. So they were very ha happy when they see the entertainment. Then after that, when they say they want to take the community shaman and the secretary and some of the other leaders away, it is there they say they cannot be able to follow them. When they are machines, mind suddenly, and open fire right there in the community town hall, kill many of the youth, the women, and some other children. More than 20 of them died instantly. Later they come out. When we say wrong, they will come back again. Begin the open fire. Then on the 15th of March 2024, they come back again. Both the whole community. Both every house is when we say they will come a community. Some of us now, our children will never see them. Our parents will never see them. Inside the bush now, where we hide now, so. So dead body dead here. Nurse with the talk so. So we won't make government come rescue us. Now. All right, so that's the video that, you know, the defense headquarters, um, you know, is debunking. They also debunked the fact that they posted um, that video of the, you know, community, the Okoma community being raised down. They already, you know, we read that tweet. They said that they did not post anything. Wow. But I also spoke with, you know, our Delta State correspondent, uh, Jemima Boloko, who said she's had a hard time to even go into that community because at this moment, the military have, you know, carried off that area. They are blocking journalists from entering that community. 
But also in the meantime, the governor of Delta State, Sheriff Obowowori, on Monday visited Okoma community in Ugeli, where the soldiers were killed to examine the extent of the damage from the fire that engulfed parts of the community. The military joint task force, however, barred journalists from covering the governor's tour. The JTF operative barricaded major roads leading to Okoma with an armored tank preventing vehicular and human traffic. The governor was said to have met with the leader of the military joint task force, Major General Jamal Abdul Salam, in a closed door meeting that lasted for an hour. This is so unfortunate that our journalist couldn't even go there. She did confirm that she tried and they did not let them in. Now, who is responsible for this crime? You heard that video, you heard some eyewitnesses there. Yeah. Uh, Vimbai, really quickly. OG, I think it's very, it becomes complicated when you're not allowing journalists and media into the space because already there's a lot of conversations happening online about which images and which videos are authentic, yeah. which ones are fake, which ones. So it's very important to allow independent media in, let people in so that we can establish the facts and separate it from narratives that might be building on uh, social media. Absolutely. And I love the fact also that, you know, I, I, the fact that they've even brought out the images of the these officers, if you can pull up those images, may their souls rest in peace. There are about 17 of them that, you know, Defense Headquarters put out in their tweet. Um, Dr. Abati, before you um, speak, I'd like for you to even just pay a little tribute, if we can have those pictures up. Well, I, I think it's very unfortunate. Originally, we were told 16 persons died. But yesterday, when the uh, Defense Headquarters released the pictures mm -hmm. and the names, uh, you know, it turned out that about 17 uh, soldiers were actually slain, including officers and men of the other ranks. These are men, you know, who were serving their country, um, and then they had to fall, you know, because they were attacked by the same persons they were supposed to, you know, uh, protect. Uh, there have been many sides to the yes. narrative, but there can be no justification Absolutely. for people you know, killing their own soldiers. We have cited the case of Americans who respect the Marines so much because they respect the value of what they do. There are persons who have said, oh, Nigerian soldiers are corrupt. Nigerian soldiers get involved in the things that they should not get involved. But then that's no justification Absolutely. for them to be slaughtered in the manner in which this happened in Okwama community. We hope that apart from publishing the names and the pictures, the uh, defense headquarters, the Nigerian army, has taken the necessary steps to first inform their families and that, you know, uh, every step will be taken to provide the support uh, that their families will need. Uh, definitely, it's a tragedy and it's an attack on the Nigerian nation. It's an attack on the values that we all hold there as uh, one humanity. Now, we were told that the uh, governor of uh, Delta State has uh, visited. Yes. And then we are two guests who were also saying the governor has a role to play. And I keep making the point that, in fact, what we have seen here also is a failure of leadership and the failure of the state. Because the, the uh, conflict between uh, Okwama and uh, Okoloba community is not something that happened overnight. No, it's not It new. has been there. Mm -hmm. They have been fighting over land. What did the governor do? Now that, uh, you know, the uh, uh, crisis has hit the roof, now the governor is going there uh, on, a, on, a, on a tour. This is not about a tour. The main challenge in Delta State is how to find uh, lasting uh, peace from uh, Ojinika's village to uh, the end of the Fokadu's uh, uh, river Absolutely. to ensure that everybody can live in peace. And now we're told that journalists were not allowed no. to cover the uh, visit of the uh, uh, governor. No, that is wrong. Journalists, the military may say, well, this is a crime scene. In fact, the whole of Nigeria itself is a crime scene. So it is wrong to disallow journalists from doing their job. Even in Afghanistan, journalists are covering the war. As uh, tough as the situation is in Gaza, journalists are allowed to do their work because journalists defend the right of societies and communities to know. The right to know is a fundamental universal human right. Article 19 of the Universal 1949 
Universal Declaration of Human Rights says that you know, every human being shall have the freedom of access to information and the right to impart knowledge and disseminate information. Section 39 of the Nigerian Constitution, 1999, opposed the same principle. Section 22 of the same 1999 Constitution says that it is the responsibility of, of the media to hold the government accountable this to the people. And in it. this particular instance, questions have been raised. And it is by journalists going to the scene and reporting every little detail of it that the propaganda that uh, the military is complaining about or the rumor mongering that has uh, uh, developed around the various narratives will not be the case because journalists will unearth the truth and report the matter. So stopping journalists from doing their work is a no-no and the military headquarters should desist from that. Absolutely. Well, still in Delta State, oh. two people were reportedly killed in Asaba, the state's capital, following a dispute between commercial motorcyclists and members of a task force in a video. Now making rounds on social media, protesters were seen blocking roads as the police officers deployed to the location opened fire. Let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. <laughs> I mean, this is happening in broad daylight, um, Rufai. I mean, if we don't have that eyewitness report, we wouldn't see two people. May their souls rest in peace. But this is happening again in the state, Delta State, by uh, Governor Obowori. And, you know, I spoke with Jumaima. She said the same thing, that these clashes have been going on. And, the, in fact, that um, killing that happened, the governor was aware 48 hours before that incident occurred and nothing happened. Apparently, it was even the militia that went in there to raid the community. Uh, militants, they say. Rufai. One thing is that I want to believe Governor Sherry Fubori Warrior is listening to all this we yeah. are saying. He must be on top of the state. Apparently, he's slacking. He's not on top of his state as we speak. If all the blame came pointing to you, then he needs to be on top of the state. So what is he doing as regards all of this? Uh, we always have skirmishes between tax force trying to enforce, but it shouldn't degenerate this way that people are getting killed. And it goes back to the film. I mean, you keep talking about Vimbaya. What are the rules of engagement? Is it that any little thing now, police will have to release life rounds? I don't understand. Are there no tear gas canisters? Are there no water cannons? Are there no rules? I mean, we see the way riots are being quelled in other parts of the world. You see policemen carry their own baton and they line up and they hold their baton in their hands and they spray water. Don't we have that? Don't we have water cannons? Don't we have things like that? Why must there always be a release of life gunfire? I think that's one thing we should look at. And I think, I think it was Mr. Fem Fala that I was talking about it then. And there was an assessment that was done on the police. Police do not have most of this anti-riot gear. So when you look at the budget and you see how much goes to the police, then are they truly buying these things? And that's why it goes back to the conversation of budget padding that is still on ground. Are we deploying the money for the things we ought to do with the money in the first place? Because it has shown now at any little thing, police must release life round. People must die. You can't even have little skirmish. People must die. I mean, because they must shoot life rounds. So it goes back to where we fund our forces. And that's why Dr. Bato was asking the question the other time that why is it that the military is intervening in life uh, in matters like this and everything? Because over the years we've not been able to improve our police forces in such a way that we can have special forces that can intervene in things like this. The mobile police, when it was set up, was supposed to be our own SWAT. But today, abuse. it was abuse. It came yes. and go. So and the mobile police scared. is not doing the work. They, so they, the they, mobile they, police is supposed to be our own elite unit. I mean, when you have, the, you have, to have an elite unit that goes in. So, you see, we keep saying rejigging security architecture. We've written security platform to, from here to Kutuguinji. It's not working. We need to go back. But who were they shooting? Those policemen, they were shooting 
motorcycle unarmed. I mean, where they, did you see, see those? Did, see, can you see young that they all have sticks stones. and stones? In, Why in, should guns, in Dr. Other Bati, parts, in other parts of the world, you see yeah. police officers carry shields yes. and batons. Yes. But here, they don't have water cannon, they don't have shield, they don't have batons. The only thing they do is judging fire. Pa, 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 pa. Unacceptable. Life round. Okay. That's the problem we're having. Now, there is, there is a general reign of impunity in the country. And what happened in Asaba? Uh, I think it happened on Monday, right? Mm -hmm. um, first on Monday, we were told that a task force, a task force controlling motorcyclists or whatever, trying to uh, uh, ensure sanity, killed two motorcyclists. And then the motorcyclists then came out to block the road to protest the killing of two of their members. Now, it happens everywhere. First, the motorcyclists, these Okada riders, mm. they are there on the road because the government of the day across Nigeria is not providing public transportation, mass transportation. It's only in Lagos State that we have seen a concrete example of the state government trying to provide alternatives through multimodal transportation system to justify getting the motorcyclists off the road. You don't want to have an encounter with those motorcyclists. They will come together and uh, gang up against you. They, they, they have their own, you know, ecosystem of rebellion. And part of it also is that they are not ready to respect the laws of the land. So impunity at that level. But no matter how impudent they may be in terms of their conduct, that's no justification for any one of them to be killed. Then the menace of task forces. It's not only in Delta State that these task forces you know, are notorious. You recall in Lagos at the time, the task force, I, I've forgotten the exact uh, 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 title in Lagos State. They killed somebody in Okoba. Yes. Because this task force, they would just go onto the road, a combination of, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, agencies of government, and they terrorize the people. Because the average man that wears a uniform in Nigeria thinks that his job is to terrorize the lower class. Even when they bought their vehicles, or I enable this motorcycle, they don't want to pay. They call themselves staff. Staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the cyclists and the uh, 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 motorists, they say, no, you cannot be staff. You are, you are a policeman. You are a soldier. We staff. Did you buy this bus for me? So this is the reign of impunity reign that of impunity. we have, you know, across all levels, Absolutely. both officially and unofficially. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. And these are issues that will have to be addressed. The state government should investigate what happened in Asaba yesterday yes. and make sure that whoever is guilty on all sides, whether in uniform or out of uniform, should be properly disciplined. All right. More reign of impunity. In Kaduna State, 87 people have reportedly been abducted by terrorists who attacked the Kajaru Station community in the Kajaru local government area of the state. The terrorists were said to have looted some shops and houses in the community. The attack occurred on Sunday night. Just a day after 14 people were also kidnapped within the same community, the Chief of Defense Staff, Christopher Musa, who met with the Governor of the State, Uba Sani, on Monday, said the attacks in Kaduna were orchestrated to bring down the government. Uh, abduction, as we know, is a social activity. People are doing it for their own sake. Some are doing it to bring down the government, to make the government look weak. But we guarantee that this will end. We are doing everything possible to ensure that we achieve success, and we will achieve success. That is the question everybody is asking, and that is the question we are trying to, to, to unravel. Why particular area, and why Kaduna? Why Nigeria? So it's on a broader front. We are looking at all the possible, uh, possible options, why these things are happening. But as we are doing that, we are also trying to stop it, to make sure that it does. But what we require is for Nigerians to give us support. Most times when we get information, it comes in a bit late. Before we react to get there, it is late. But we're happy with the way people are responding. You can see from what happened in Delta State, how Nigerians are responding. Everybody supporting the armed forces and the security forces. That is what will ginger the troops to continue to do more. But we assure them that we have given our lives for the sake of this country and we'll do everything to ensure that this country is secured. And once it is secured, it will continue to develop. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> The chief of defense staff there promising to stop the madness in Kaduna State. But, you know, we are hearing this from the government. We are hearing this from the army that these whole attacks are being orchestrated. But that's not the point. Why 
is that community not being guarded at this point? These people should go in there and guard that community. But I feel like we're talking too much about just, you know, the reign of impunity and the sadness that is going on in Nigeria. Yesterday, the uh, governor of uh, Kaduna State also, uh, you know, he, he actually launched uh, palliative and said that he will be spending 11.4 billion naira on distributing the second batch of palliatives targeted at the state's poor and vulnerable, which I think, you know, will help, you know, the citizens there probably calm down. Also, yesterday, we saw the governor of Sokoto State, Ahmad Aliu, um, you know, breaking uh, the Ramadan fast with uh, a child. If you can uh, pull up that video, he was sharing a, a meal with a child. I thought that was beautiful to see. <laughs> And that's the video there. I mean, these state governors, I, the, the same states, Kaduna and Sokoto, they have these issues going on in their state, which is quite unfortunate. You know, Nigeria shall survive. Shall we just end what's trending on a lighter note? Take our final story. Under entertainment. Grammy-winning artist Ayodeji Balogun, popularly known as Whisked, has denounced being an Afrobeats artist. Well, in a series of posts on his Instagram page, while announcing his new album titled Morayo, Whiskid cautioned Nigerians against categorizing him as an Afrobeat artist. He also warned bloggers against posting his new album, Whiskid further read the Riot Act, informing those who fell in love with him when he sang Pakuromo to refrain from downloading his new album. <laughs> Sorry, I love whiskey though. I do love whiskeys, but this one is uh, what do you call it? <laughs> Fire. What does it mean? He's not an Afrobeat star. Bye. Please, Please help us out. Get there. I'm, so, I'm guilty Please. of being one of the people who downloaded <laughs> Pakuromo. <laughs> Pakuromo. Pakuromo. Yeah, I downloaded it. Pakuromo. So Wait, sorry. No, I will to you, whiskey. I will give you more. It's all about. But, uh, like you know you. what? Yeah. I, I think there's so many. You know, this quest for dominance, whether it be Burner Boy, Davido, who's the greatest of all time, and all of that. I don't think it matters. Just give us the music. You know, um, Burner Boy is not an Afrobeat. I says it's Afrofusion. But you know, he started this whole thing. But I mean, Afrobeat is so beautiful. Why are these artists denouncing well, this title? Uh, Afrobeat is going through a cultural transformation. Yeah. But what no one amongst all of them can deny yes. is the legacy that they share, the fellow legacy, mm -hmm. yes. the icon, the eternal icon who created, invented the Afrobeat. And if you listen to their music, whether they say they are doing uh, Afropop or Fuji pop like Ashake mm -hmm. or R&B or fusion. hip hop Afro or Afrofusion Afro as yes. Bonaboy says, yeah. they all have that legacy. You know, uh, uh, they share part of that fella heritage. Mm -hmm. But nobody, of course, can become like fella. Absolutely. Because fella is unique, is an avatar. Yeah. But what uh, uh, Whiskey. Whiskey is saying is that it cuts across all the genres. Yeah. And that he doesn't want to be categorized. He doesn't want to be pigeonholed. Yeah. Uh, he's first and foremost an artist. Yeah. But the other point he made about copyright, yeah. people downloading his music free. It's an important point, but we've run out of time. Absolutely. Copyright is a major subject on its own. Absolutely. Well, Fela was Afrobeat. And then these new, the young artists are called Afrobeat stars. But I will love you all, by the way. Weezy <laughs> Baby. I love my baby was my favorite. Well, all right. I'd love to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.